I'm coming from Los Angeles. I've just conducted a series of concerts with the New West Symphony, where I'm music director. And I'm here in San Francisco to do a speech for Amgen. Amgen is, as you know, one of the world's largest biotechnical corporations, and uh, I'm speaking to their sales department, talking about uh, teamwork. You're very much like a great symphony orchestra. Like you, a symphony orchestra is a team of talented individuals working together in the closest and most precise of harmony. Watching a conductor on a stage working with musicians uh, for a person who's not aware of the inner workings can can look like the ultimate exercise in teamwork. And uh, a person who's the president of a corporation walking in and seeing 110 people being led by this person with a stick in his hand, um, you know, with sections and every section having a leadership. And I mean, the model looks like an ideal model for, for uh, corporate leadership. Um, these are tone bars. They actually uh, came, they were really an idea that came out of ORF, the ORF method, uh, whereby, you know, young kids of three and four and five get to learn how to play musical instruments. And ORF thought that by giving them just simply one tone, one, one uh, uh, note, that's a D, for instance, um, that uh, in a group they could get them to play complex musical compositions, and that's exactly what I'm doing here with, these group, with this group of people. Boris spends a lot of his career away. There's nothing new about that. He's traveled as long as I've known him, and he spends a huge amount of the year, usually from the end of September until May, away somewhere. Okay, great, because the bags still haven't arrived. We're down at the, at the carousel, and of course, they're not here yet. I do about 40 speeches a year in different parts of the world, and about 130 concerts a year. I guess I was exposed to music before I was born. My parents were both professional musicians. My mother was a cellist, and, and uh, my first exposure to music was in the womb in the last trimester of pregnancy when I could begin to hear. And, and interestingly, later on, uh, uh, I discovered when I was starting to play string quartets that I knew the cello line better than the violin line, and that those were works that my mother had played uh, during that last trimester. I like this. <laughs> Boris gets very quiet, painfully quiet. And as you can see, I mean, he's not like that as a personality. But before a concert, he really speaks very little. He is with his scores, he's thinking, he goes for quiet walks, he doesn't like to talk. I guess I might say that the person who was the greatest influence to me was Leonard Bernstein. My parents got me involved in the uh, Dimitri Metropolis International Conductors Competition, which I subsequently won first prize, and one of the aspects of the prize was to become assistant to Leonard Bernstein. And working with Bernstein and being there, living in that atmosphere, opened huge doors to communication, particularly in the aspect of working and making concerts for children. This is a baton, okay? It's really a stick of wood. It's not very up to much by itself, but you have to help it. One, two, three. One, two, not fast, not fast. Keep the tempo steady, okay? I think a good conductor is someone who can bring the composer's intentions to life. And that's where I come into play. Uh, uh, I think uh, what I want to do is to make it seem as this is the very first time anybody has heard or played those notes and that they communicate in a very real way, whether it's the first time or the 90th time you've heard the yeah. piece. Hey. Mm -pa 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 -pa. It's a little late. 
y un poco indietro. Un pa 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 pa. The marvelous aspect about playing this type of music is that it's different every time. He is a great Italianophile and uh, spends as much of his time here as he can in a very busy schedule, but it's uh, awfully nice for us to be able to showcase Canadian talent. Everybody adored it. It was a real discovery and beautifully uh, played and beautifully uh, performed. It's absolutely Earl Enchanted. He's a great conductor. This was a tough program for them and they worked really hard. To watch them all beaming coming off that stage, that's that's very cool. Uh, we are now going up the Via della Conciliazione and the building right in front of us is of course uh, St. Peter's and the concert last night I think went, went very well. The audience seemed to be very happy and today I'm going to the Vatican to meet with uh, Sua Excellenza uh, Arcivescovo Gioia uh, about a potential concert for the Pope's visit uh, to Canada. So they look at you know, everywhere you go in the Vatican, there's so many beautiful things. Yeah. Ci sono tante bellezze. Last year, he uh, conducted Bernstein's Mass in front of the Pope in Rome, which was certainly quite an extraordinary event, uh, and particularly a, a Mass written by a Jewish composer and performed by a Jewish conductor. It had been a dream of Lenny's to have this Mass accepted by the Catholic Church, let alone performed in the Vatican. And that was a thought that I'm sure never even entered his mind. Being a conductor, I think, is, I'd say, 40% psychology, 45% musicianship, and 15% uh, technical skill with the baton. People who have a real ability to communicate both gesticulatively and verbally, that really is what makes a great conductor, someone who has an ability to lead people, a leader, a natural leader. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm.